Parasites rule the natural world. They've infiltrated every living thing on the planet from the tiniest bacteria to blue whales. But what if these master manipulators became the victims? A wasp gets its head stuck while born through tree bark. Suddenly, another wasp bursts through its skull from behind. An ant clings to a leaf as fungus erupts from its brain. But that same fungus is being devoured by something else. Inside a single cell, a massive virus builds its factory, only to have a smaller virus hijack the entire operation. These are hyperparasites, parasites that have evolved to hunt other parasites that turn predators into prey. And what scientists are discovering about these microscopic assassins will change everything you thought you knew about who's really in control of life on Earth. 100 million years ago, parasites owned the world. They lived inside every animal, plant, and microbe on Earth. Life was good for these biological thieves. But then evolution made a breakthrough that changed everything. A fungus finds a mushroom and starts eating it. Nearby, a second fungus is watching. Instead of finding its own mushroom to attack, this second fungus attacks the first one. This was the birth of the very first hyperparasite. We know this happened because we found the crime scene presented an ancient tree sap. Inside 100 million year old amber from Myanmar sits a mushroom, a fungus eating it, and another fungus eating that fungus. Three layers of life frozen in time. Once this strategy worked, it spread like wildfire. Different creatures all over the planet independently evolved the same idea. Bacteria started hunting other bacteria. Wasps began targeting other wasps. Even viruses learned to attack other viruses. Why did this happen so fast? Because hyperparasites had discovered evolution's ultimate cheat code. Regular parasites had to evolve complex tools to break into healthy hosts. Hyperparasites just had to evolve ways to recognize and catch other parasites. Natural selection rewarded this strategy big time. Any creature that could hunt parasites had unlimited food sources and very little competition. But evolution wasn't done. As hyperparasites got better at hunting, parasites started fighting back. And that arms race was about to explode into something far more complex than anyone could have imagined. Fast forward to 50 million years ago, some wasp species had mastered the art of parasitism. They would lay eggs inside caterpillars, and their babies would eat the caterpillar from the inside out. Ain't that cute? But then a few wasp species evolved something completely new. Instead of targeting caterpillars, they started targeting other parasitic wasps. A regular parasitic wasp would attack an aphid and lay its egg inside. The wasp larva would grow fat and happy, feeding on the aphid's body. But before it could finish developing, a second wasp would arrive. This hyperparasitic wasp had evolved the ability to smell chemicals that told it another wasp was already inside the aphid. Instead of finding its own aphid to attack, it would drill through the aphid's skin and inject its egg directly into the first wasp larva. This evolutionary breakthrough created an explosion of diversity. Within millions of years, dozens of different wasp species had evolved hyperparasitic lifestyles. Each species evolved to target specific types of parasitic wasps. Some evolved longer drilling equipment to reach deeper targets. Others evolved better chemical sensors to find hidden parasites. A few developed the ability to wait patiently until their target was fully grown before attacking. Yes, that is an ability. But the most incredible evolutionary development was some wasps evolved to be hyperparasites of hyperparasites. It just doesn't end. First, a regular wasp would attack an aphid, then a regular parasitic wasp would attack that first wasp. Finally, a third wasp would attack the hyperparasite, all inside the same tiny aphid. Three levels deep, aphid, parasite, hyperparasite, each level of hyperparasitism evolved because there was an evolutionary advantage to targeting the level below it. The deeper you went, the fatter and more defenseless your target became. The insect world became evolution's testing ground for hyperparasitic complexity. Each group independently discovered the same evolutionary strategy, but each developed their own unique tools and techniques. But even the insect wars were just the simplest evolutionary experiments of hyperparasites, because what came next would blow these wasps battles out of the water completely. By 25 million years ago, hyperparasites had conquered the insect world, but evolution wasn't satisfied. It had one more group to test. Viruses. For billions of years, viruses had been the ultimate parasites. They couldn't even reproduce without hijacking other cells. They were evolution's perfect thieves. But in 2008, we found Sputnik, a virus that infects other viruses. This was a single-celled amoeba infected by Mimi virus. These giant viruses are so giant that scientists first mistook them for bacteria. 
Mimi virus takes over the amoeba's machinery and uses it to make more viruses, and the amoeba is forced to produce thousands of new Mimi virus particles. Sputnik lurks in the same waters. This much smaller virus cannot reproduce alone, it cannot attack healthy amoebas. Sputnik can only multiply inside amoebas already infected by giant viruses. When Sputnik finds a Mimi virus infected amoeba, it launches its attack. The tiny virus steals the giant virus's reproduction machinery. It uses Mimi virus's own tools and materials to make copies of itself. During this theft, Sputnik cripples the giant virus's ability to reproduce. This was hyperparasitism at the most basic level of life. Once Sputnik proved this strategy worked, other viruses started copying it. We have discovered dozens of virophages, viruses that specifically hunt other viruses. Each virophage evolved its own hunting strategy. Some learned to hide inside giant viruses and stay dormant until the perfect moment to strike. Others evolved to shred their host virus's DNA while making copies of themselves. A few even evolved to work as genetic engineers, stealing useful genes from one giant virus and transferring them to another. But the most incredible evolutionary leap happened when some virophages learn to target multiple types of viruses. They developed the ability to recognize and attack dozens of different giant virus species. This created an evolutionary arms race at the microscopic level. Giant viruses started evolving defenses against virophages. They developed better security systems and early warning mechanisms. The virophages fought back by evolving better infiltration techniques and more powerful hijacking tools. The most successful virophages were the ones that learned to be patient. They would hide inside a giant virus for weeks, letting it do all the work of infecting cells and setting up reproduction factories. Only the last second would they reveal themselves and steal everything. This viral hyperparasitism proved that evolution could create complexity at any scale. Even the simplest forms of life could develop sophisticated hunter-prey relationships. But some virophages evolved to carry passengers. They would pick up smaller viruses and transport them to new host cells. These passenger viruses would then help the virophage attack the giant virus from multiple angles. And within just a few million years, the microscopic world had become as complex as any ecosystem on Earth. But all of this complexity was leading to something even more amazing, because evolution was about to reveal that hyperparasites weren't just hunters, they were the secret architects of our planet. By 10 million years ago, evolution had discovered that hyperparasites could keep other parasites from getting too powerful and destroying everything, kind of like a game of risk. The zombie ant fungus shows how this control system works. Without its hyperparasite, the fungus would get even better at turning ants into zombies and could wipe out every ant colony in the area. The hyperparasitic fungus prevents this disaster by working like a biological safety switch. When zombie ant fungus populations grow too large, hyperparasite populations grow in response. They sterilize more zombie fungi and reduce infection rates. This elegant feedback loop has kept forests stable for millions of years. Sometimes hyperparasites literally save entire species from extinction. The American chestnut tree once dominated eastern North America until the chestnut blight fungus arrived from Asia in the early 1900s. Within decades, billions of trees died, and the species nearly vanished. Scientists discovered that the blight fungus could be infected by a virus. This hyperparasitic virus reduces the fungus's killing power. When the fungus becomes infected with this virus, it loses much of its ability to kill trees. The infected fungal strains cause only small wounds instead of deadly infections. European researchers used these weakened fungi on purpose to control the chestnut blight. The virus helped protect the chestnut trees across much of Europe. Now, American scientists are trying to introduce similar virus-infected fungi to help restore chestnut forests in the U.S. In ocean ecosystems, bacteriophages act as hyperparasites. They control bacterial populations and help maintain balance in the marine food web. These viruses kill an estimated 20% of all ocean bacteria every day. They prevent bacterial blooms that would consume all available nutrients and create massive dead zones. But the relationship between hyperparasites and ecosystems makes situations worse by increasing the deadliness of their primary parasite hosts. The cholera toxin that makes Vibrio cholerae so deadly comes from genes donated by a bacteriophage. The Shiga toxin that makes some E. coli strains lethal also comes from an integrated virus. These hyperparasitic viruses turn their bacterial hosts into biological weapons. They provide new genetic tools for exploiting and harming ultimate hosts. 
This creates an evolutionary arms race where adding a hyperparasite can make the original parasite far more dangerous than it would be alone. Mathematical models show that introducing hyperparasites into existing parasite host systems can lead to unexpected outcomes. Sometimes this selects for gentler parasites that avoid hyperparasitic detection. Other times it drives evolution of more deadly strains that can outrun their hyperparasitic hunters. These multi-level interactions can trigger sudden shifts in ecosystem balance. The presence or absence of hyperparasites can determine whether parasite populations remain stable, swing in regular cycles, or crash completely. And it raises a big question. If hyperparasites control so much of the natural world, what does that mean for us humans? The war between parasites and hyperparasites affects human life in ways most people never really realize. This biological battle is already changing how we fight diseases, protect crops, and develop new medicines. In hospitals around the world, doctors are using hyperparasitism to save lives. They deploy bacteriophages, viruses that hunt and kill specific bacteria, as living weapons against drug-resistant infections that no antibiotic can stop. This treatment uses one parasite to destroy another. The bacteriophage infects the harmful bacterium and hijacks its machinery to make copies of itself. Then it explodes the bacterial cell from the inside, killing the pathogen while leaving human cells completely unharmed. Recent medical traits show remarkable success treating patients with deadly infections using cocktails of carefully chosen phages. In one case, a patient dying from a pan-resistant Acinetobacter infection survived after doctors gave him intravenous phage therapy. These treatments represent precision hyperparasitism, and as antibiotic resistance spreads globally, phage therapy may become our main weapon against bacterial superbugs. Scientists now engineer hyperparasites with even greater accuracy. They use CRISPR to change bacteriophages into tiny viral killers that attack specific genes in harmful bacteria and cut their DNA apart. In farming, hyperparasites have been quietly protecting crops for decades through biological control systems. The fungus Ampelomyces quisqualis naturally targets powdery mildew, a parasitic fungus that attacks hundreds of plant species worldwide. Ampelomyces infects powdery mildew colonies and kills them, which protect plants from disease without chemical fungicides. This hyperparasitic fungus has been turned into commercial products like AQ10, allowing farmers to deploy one microscopic organism against another in an environmentally friendly way. Similar hyperparasitic strategies are being developed against other agricultural pests. Trichoderma fungi get added to soils to hunt root-attacking pathogens. Hyperparasitic viruses are being tested against fungal diseases that destroy food crops. We're now building a toolkit of biological warfare using nature's own parasite hunters. But the complexity of these relationships means introducing hyperparasites doesn't always work as planned. Scientists have released parasitic wasps to control crop-eating insects, only to discover that native hyperparasitic wasps attack the introduced biocontrol agents. These local hyperparasites mess up pest control by killing the organisms that are supposed to get rid of agricultural pests. Pests. The target pests bounce back, biocontrol programs fail, and farmers end up worse off than before. When we interfere with natural food webs, there's always another layer of parasitic relationships waiting to cause some problems. The drug industry is beginning to mine hyperparasites for new medications. Each hyperparasitic species shows millions of years of evolution focused on defeating specific parasites. The chemicals they produce could inspire new types of antimicrobial drugs. Studies of hyperparasitic fungi have found new antifungal compounds that work differently from current medicines. Some hyperparasitic bacteria make antibiotics that kill drug-resistant pathogens. Even our own bodies carry evidence of hyperparasitic warfare. The beneficial bacteria in our digestive system doesn't just compare compete with harmful microbes for resources. Many good bacteria attack harmful microbes. They make compounds that kill disease-causing organisms while leaving helpful bacteria safe. Many parasites carry traces of ancient hyperparasites in their DNA. These are like genetic fossils from viral infections millions of years ago. We're studying these scars to learn how parasites have fought over time and find weak spots in modern pathogens. But every answer we find reveals 10 more questions we never knew to ask. For millions of years, an invisible war has happened right under our noses. Parasites and hyperparasites fight in evolutionary battles that have shaped how life developed on Earth. The complex networks of stealing and control that these organisms created work as hidden control systems that keep ecosystems stable and working. What started as a simple plan, one parasite eating another, has grown into some of the most advanced biological engineering on the planet. 
The future will show whether we can learn to work with these ancient systems of biological control, or whether our interference will mess up the delicate balance that nature's meant forever perfecting. We are only beginning to understand how important these hidden relationships really are. As we learn more about the secret lives of hyperparasites, we may discover that the future of life on Earth depends as much on the smallest organisms as it does on the largest ones. The microscopic puppet masters continue their ancient work. They build stability from chaos. They maintain the complex web of life that supports every ecosystem on Earth. Most people never see them, never know their names, never understand their vital role. But these tiny architects of life deserve our respect and protection. They remind us that nature operates on levels we can barely comprehend. Hyperparasites may control ecosystems, but some parasites control behavior itself. Our video on zombie parasites shows what happens when evolution learns to hijack minds instead of just bodies. Totally check it out. And thanks for watching.